Welcome back to the Bible in a Year Challenge. Today we are on March 24th, and that is going to come from Deuteronomy 27 through 28, Psalms 26, and Luke 24. So Deuteronomy chapter 27, the altar on Mount Ebal. Then Moses and the leaders of Israel charged the people as follows. Keep all these commands that I'm giving you today. When you cross the Jordan River and enter the land the Lord your God is giving you, set up some large stones and coat them with plaster. Then write all the terms of this law on them. I repeat, you will soon cross the river to enter the land the Lord your God is giving you, a land flowing with milk and honey, just as the Lord, the God of your ancestors, promised you. When you cross the Jordan, set up these stones at Mount Ebal and coat them with plaster as I am commanding you today. Then build an altar there to the Lord your God using natural stones. Do not shape the stones with an iron tool. On the altar you must offer burnt offerings to the Lord your God. Sacrifice peace offerings on it also, and feast there with great joy before the Lord your God. On the stones coated with plaster you must clearly write all the terms of this law. Then Moses and the Levitical priests addressed all Israel as follows. O oh, Israel, be quiet and listen. Today you become the people of the Lord your God. So obey the Lord your God by keeping all these commands and laws that I am giving you today. Curses from Mount Ebal. That same day, Moses gave this charge to the people. When you cross the Jordan River, the tribes of Simeon, Levi, Judah, Issachar, Joseph, and Benjamin must stand on Mount Gerizim to proclaim a blessing over the people. And the tribes of Reuben, Gad, Asher, Zebulun, Dan, and Naphtali must stand on, on Mount Ebal to proclaim a curse. Then the Levites must shout to all the people of Israel, Curse is anyone who carves or casts idols and secretly sets them up. These idols, the work of craftsmen, are detestable to the Lord. And all the people will, will reply, Amen. Cursed is anyone who despises father or mother. And all the people will reply, Amen. Cursed is anyone who steals property from a neighbor by moving a boundary marker. And all the people will reply, Amen. Cursed is anyone who leads a blind person astray on the road. And all the people will reply, Amen. Cursed is anyone who is unjust to foreigners, orphans, and widows. And all the people will reply, Amen. Cursed is anyone who has sexual intercourse with his father's wife, for he has violated his father. And all the people will reply, Amen. Cursed is anyone who has sexual intercourse with an animal. And all the people will reply, Amen. Cursed is anyone who has sexual intercourse with his sister, whether she is the daughter of his father or his mother. And all the people will reply, Amen. Cursed is anyone who has sexual intercourse with his mother-in-law. And all the people will reply, Amen. Curses anyone who kills another person in secret, and all the people will reply, Amen. Curses anyone who accepts payment to kill an innocent person, and all the people will reply, Amen. Curses anyone who does not affirm the terms of this law by obeying them, and all the people will reply, Amen. Chapter 28, Blessings for Obedience. If you fully obey the Lord your God by keeping all the commands I am giving you today, the Lord your God will exalt you above all the nations of the world. You will experience all these blessings if you obey the Lord your God. You will be blessed in your towns and in the country. You will be blessed with many children and productive fields. You will be blessed with fertile herds and flocks. You will be blessed with baskets overflowing with fruit and with kneading bowls filled with bread. You will be blessed wherever you go, both incoming and ingoing. The Lord will conquer your enemies when they attack you. They will attack you from one direction, but they will scatter from you in seven. The Lord will bless everything you do and will fill your storehouses with grain. The Lord your God will bless you in the land he is giving you. If you obey the commands of the Lord your God and walk in his ways, the Lord will establish you as his holy people as he solemnly promised to do. Then all the nations of the world will see that you are a people claimed by the Lord and they will stand in awe of you. The Lord will give you an abundance of good things in the land he swore to give your ancestors, many children, numerous livestock, and abundant crops. The Lord will send rain at the proper time from his rich treasury in the heavens to bless all the work you do. You will lend to many nations, but you will never need to borrow from them. If you listen to these commands of the Lord your God and carefully obey them, the Lord will make you the head and not the tail, and you will always have the upper hand. You must not turn away from any of the commands I have given you today to follow after other gods and worship them. Curses for disobedience. But if you refuse to listen to the Lord your God and do not obey all the commands and laws I have given you today, all these curses will come and overwhelm you. You will be cursed in your towns and in the country. You will be cursed with baskets of empty fruit and with kneading bowls. You will be cursed with few children and barren fields. You will be cursed with infertile herds and flocks. You will be cursed wherever you go, both incoming and ingoing. The Lord himself will send against you 
curses, confusion, and disillusionment in everything you do until at last you are completely destroyed for doing evil and forsaking me. The Lord will send diseases among you until none of you are left in the land you are about to enter and occupy. The Lord will strike you with wasting disease, fever, and inflammation, with scorching heat and drought, and with blight and mildew. These devastations will pursue you until you die. The skies above will be as unyielding as bronze, and the earth beneath will be as hard as iron. The Lord will turn your rain into sand and dust, and it will pour down from the sky until you are destroyed. The Lord will cause you to be defeated by your enemies. You will attack your enemies from one direction, but you will scatter from them in seven. You will be an object of horror to all the kingdoms of the earth. Your dead bodies will be food for the birds and wild animals, and no one will be there to chase them away. The Lord will afflict you with the boils of Egypt and with tumors, scurvy, and the itch from which you cannot be cured. The Lord will strike you with madness, blindness, and panic. You will grope around in broad daylight, just like a blind person groping in the darkness, and you will not succeed at anything you do. You will be oppressed and robbed continually, and no one will come to save you. You will be engaged to a woman, but another man will, la will ravish her. You will build a house, but someone else will live in it. You will plant a vineyard, but you will never enjoy its fruit. Your ox will be butchered before your eyes, but you won't get a single bite of the meat. Your donkey will be driven away, never to be, re never to be returned. Your sheep will be given to your enemies, and no one will be there to help you. You will watch as your sons and daughters are taken away as slaves. Your heart will break as you long for them, but nothing you do will help. A foreign nation you have never heard about will eat the crops you worked so hard to grow. You will suffer under constant oppression and harsh treatment. You will go mad because of all the tragedy around you. The Lord will cover you from head to foot with incurable boils. The Lord will exile you and the king you crown to a nation unknown to you and your ancestors. Then in exile you will worship gods of wood and stone. You will become an object of horror, a proverb, and a mockery among all the nations to which the Lord sends you. You will plant much but harvest little, for locusts will eat your crops. You will plant vineyards and care for them, but you will not drink the wine or eat the grapes, for worms will destroy the vines. You will grow olive trees throughout your land, but you will never use the olive oil. For the trees will drop the fruit before it is ripe. You will have sons and daughters, but you will not keep them, for they will be led away into captivity. Swarms of insects will destroy your trees and crops. The foreigners living among you will become stronger and stronger, while you become weaker and weaker. They will lend money to you, not you to them. They will be the head, and you will be the tail. If you refuse to listen to the Lord your God and to obey the commands and laws he has given you, all these curses will pursue and overtake you until you are destroyed. These horrors will serve as a sign and warning among you and your descendants forever. But you have not served the Lord your God with joy. Because you have not served the Lord your God with joy and enthusiasm for the abundant benefits you have received, you will serve your enemies whom the Lord will send against you. You will be left hungry, thirsty, naked, and lacking in everything. They will oppress you harshly until you are destroyed. The Lord will bring a distant nation against you from the end of the earth, and it will swoop down on you like an eagle. It is a nation whose language you do not understand, a fierce and heartless nation that shows no respect for the old and no pity for the young. Its armies will devour your livestock and crops, and you will starve to death. They will leave you with no grain, new wine, olive oil, calves, or lambs, bringing about your destruction. They will lay siege to your cities until all the fortified walls in your land, the walls you trusted to protect you, are knocked down. They will attack all the towns in the land the Lord your God has given you. The siege will be so severe that you will eat the flesh of your own sons and daughters whom the Lord your God has given you. The most tender-hearted man among you will have no compassion for his own brother, his beloved wife, and his surviving children. He will refuse to give them a share of the flesh he is devouring, the flesh of one of his own children, because he has nothing else to eat during the siege that your enemy will inflict on all your towns. The most tender and delicate woman among you so delicate she would not so much as touch her feet to the ground, will be cruel to the husband that she loves and to her own son or daughter. She will hide from, hide from them the afterbirth and the new baby she has born so that she herself can secretly eat it. She will have nothing else to eat during the siege and terrible distress that your enemy will inflict on your towns. On all your towns. If you refuse to obey all the terms of this law that are written in this book, and you do not fear the glorious and awesome name of the Lord your God, then the Lord will overwhelm both you and your children with indes indescribable plagues. These plagues will be intense and without relief, making you miserable and unbearably sick. He will bring against you all the diseases of Egypt that you feared so much, and they will claim you. The Lord will bring against you every sickness and plague there is, even those not mentioned in this book of the law, until you are destroyed. Though you are as numerous as the stars in the sky, a few of you will be left because you had not listened to the Lord your God. Just as the Lord has found great pleasure in helping you to prosper and multiply, the Lord will find pleasure destroying you. 
until you disappear from the land you are about to enter and occupy. For the Lord will scatter you among all the nations from one end of the earth to the other. There you will worship foreign gods that neither you nor your ancestors have known, gods made of wood and stone. There among those nations you will find no place of security and rest, and the Lord, and the Lord will cause your heart to tremble, your eyesight to fail, and your soul to despair. Your lives will hang in doubt. You will live day and night in fear with no reason to believe that you will see the morning light. In the morning you will say, if only it were night. And in the evening you will say, if only it were morning. You will say this because of your terror at the awesome horrors you have seen around you. Then the Lord will send you back to Egypt in ships, a journey I promised you would never make again. There you will offer to sell yourselves to your enemies as slaves, but no one will want to buy you. And Psalms 26. Huh. My sheet says Psalms 26, but I read Psalms 35 last time, so it should be 36. Psalms 36, actually. For the choir director, a psalm of David, the servant of the Lord. Sin whispers to the wicked, deep within their hearts. They have no fear of God to restrain them. In their blind conceit, they cannot see how wicked they really are. Everything they say is crooked and deceitful. They refuse to act wisely or to do what is good. They lie awake at night, hatching sinful plots. Their course of action is never good. They make no attempt to turn from evil. Your unfailing love, O Lord, is as vast as the heavens. Your faithfulness reaches beyond the clouds. Your righteousness is mighty like the mountains, is like the mighty mountains. Your justice like the ocean's depth. You care for people and animals alike, O Lord. How precious is your unfailing love, O God. All humanity finds shelter in the shadow of your wings. You feed them from the abundance of your own house, letting them drink from your rivers of delight. For you are the fountain of life, the light by which we see. Pour out your unfailing love on those who love you. Give justice to those with honest hearts. Don't let the proud trample me. Don't let the wicked push me around. Look, they have fallen. They have been thrown down, never to rise again. And Luke 24. The resurrection. But very early on Sunday morning, the women came to the tomb, taking the spices they had prepared. They found that the stone covering the entrance had been rolled aside, so they went in, but they couldn't find the body of the Lord Jesus. They were puzzled, trying to think what could have happened to it. Suddenly, two men appeared to them, clothed in dazzling robes. The women were terrified and bowed low before them. Then the men asked, Why are you looking in a tomb for someone who is alive? He isn't here. He has risen from the dead. Don't you remember when he, what he told you back in Galilee, that the Son of Man must be betrayed into the hands of sinful men and be crucified, and that he would rise again the third day? Then they remembered that he had said this, so they rushed back to tell his eleven disciples and everyone else what had happened. The women who went to the tomb were Mary Magdalene, Joanna, Mary the mother of James, and several others. They told the apostles what had happened, but the story sounded like nonsense, so they didn't believe it. However, Peter ran to the tomb to look. Stooping, he peered in and saw the empty linen wrappings, and he went home again, wondering what had happened. The walk to Emmaus. That same day, two of Jesus' followers were walking to the village of Emmaus, seven, mile, seven miles out of Jerusalem. As they walked along, they were talking about everything that had happened. Suddenly, Jesus himself came along and joined them and began walking beside them, but they didn't know who he was because God kept them from recognizing him. You seem to be in a deep discussion about something, he said. What are you so concerned about? They stopped short, sadness written across their faces. Then one of them, Cleopas, replied, You must be the only person in Jerusalem who hasn't heard about all the things that have happened there in the last few days. What things, Jesus asked. The things that happened to Jesus, the man from Nazareth, they said. He was a prophet who did wonderful miracles. He was a mighty teacher, highly regarded by both God and all the people. But our leading priests and other religious leaders arrested him and handed him over to be condemned to death, and they crucified him. We had thought he was the Messiah who had come to rescue Israel. That all happened three days ago. Then some women from our group of his followers were at his tomb early this morning, and they came back with an amazing report. They said his body was missing, and they had seen angels who told them Jesus is alive. Some of our men ran out to see, and sure enough, Jesus' body was gone, just as the woman had said. Then Jesus said to them, You are such foolish people. 
You find it so hard to believe all that the prophets wrote in the scriptures. Wasn't it clearly predicted by the prophets that the Messiah would have to suffer all these things before entering his time of glory? Then Jesus quoted passages from the writings of Moses and all the prophets explaining what all the scriptures said about himself. By this time, they were nearing Emmaus and the end of their journey. Jesus would have gone on, but they begged him to stay the night with them since it was getting late. So he went home with them. As they sat down to eat, he took a small loaf of bread and asked God's blessing on it, broke it, then gave it to them. Suddenly their eyes were opened and they recognized him. And at that moment, he disappeared. They said to each other, didn't our hearts feel strangely warm as he talked with us on the road and explained the scriptures to us? And within the hour, <coughs> they were on their way back to Jerusalem where the 11 disciples and the other followers of Jesus were gathered. When they arrived, they were greeted with the report, the Lord has really risen. He appeared to Peter. Jesus appears to the disciples. Then the two from Emmaus told their story of how Jesus had appeared to them as they were walking along the road and how they recognized him as he was breaking the bread. And just as they were telling about it, Jesus himself was suddenly sitting there among them. He said, peace be with you. But the whole group was terribly frightened, thinking they were seeing a ghost. Why are you frightened? He asked. Why do you doubt who I am? Look at my hands. Look at my feet. You can see that it's really me. Touch me and make sure that I'm not a ghost, because ghosts don't have bodies as you see that I do. As he spoke, he held out his hands for them to see, and he showed them his feet. Still they stood there doubting, filled with joy and wonder. Then he asked them, Do you have anything here to eat? They gave him a piece of broiled fish, and he ate it as they watched. Then he said, When I was with you before, I told you that everything written about me by Moses and the prophets and in the Psalms must all come true. Then he opened their minds to understand these many scriptures. And he said, to the, and he said Yes, it, it was written long ago that the Messiah must suffer and die and rise again from the dead on the third day. With my authority, take this message of repentance to all the nations beginning in Jerusalem. There is forgiveness of sin for all who turn to me. You are witnesses of all these things. Now I will send the Holy Spirit just as my father promised. But stay here in the city until the Holy Spirit comes and fills you with power from heaven. The Ascension. Then Jesus led them to Bethany, and lifting his hands to heaven, he blessed them. While he was blessing them, he left them and was taken up to heaven. They worshipped him, and then returned to Jerusalem, filled with great joy. And they spent all their time in the temple, praising God. That is all for Luke. And that is all for this reading. I will see you next time.